This is the Ted Walshin Podcast. Brought to you by Helenda's The Meat People. Enjoy their award-winning products at selected Metro, Sobeys, Fortino's, and Foodland locations. Helenda's, the way sausage should taste. And Tom's Place. For the finest in men's clothing at unbeatable prices, it's Tom's Place at 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. Tom's Place will suit you. And now, here's Ted Wallachian. My special guest this week stars as Detective William Murdoch on CBC's hit television show, Murdoch Mysteries. He has received numerous awards for his work on television and film, including the prestigious Actor Award of Excellence for his lifetime of work. This year, he is nominated for a Canadian Screen Award in the category Best Lead Actor. Yannick Besson, welcome. How are you? Well, thanks very much. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm very happy to be here. Um, you know, I've been listening to you for a long time, so I'm thrilled that you wanted to talk to me. Oh, I'm thrilled that you're on. I'm, I'm a big fan of your show. I, I found out by a friend who said to me, he says, Teddy, says, I saw the show yesterday. You got to watch it. Stephen Harper was a guest. I said, it's called the news, Norm. <laughs> he says, no, no, no. He was on a show called Murdoch Mysteries. And so then I, I tuned into it and I thought, wow, what a fascinating concept. I kind of originally, yeah. I, I held back from watching it, I think, initially, because and it was, to me, typical CBC. When I grew up, CBC did so many dramas that were period pieces, and, and they weren't all that exciting, to be honest with you. And I guess that kind of kept me away at first. But then once I got into it, I got hooked onto it, and because and, it is a, a period piece. Although you guys jump uh, boundaries of dates and, and periods and times at, at, uh, at will, don't you? We, we do like to have fun. Um, yeah, you know, it's funny. I grew up watching uh, the CBC and, and cut my teeth on all of the, 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 the crime procedural stuff. Uh, a lot of British exports and so on. And, and you're right, you know, we've been doing things in Canada. It's, it's it's a strange model. We've been doing things here a certain way for a long time and not necessarily watching a lot of what we make, um, but that's that's changing. Certainly has changed uh, in my time and, and, I, and I appreciate it. Um, but when we started Murdoch Mysteries, there was no period stuff on the landscape. Uh, um, not much to speak of on CBC and certainly elsewhere there was next to nothing. I think there was Boardwalk Empire maybe around 2007. So, you know, I didn't have, I didn't hold much hope in my heart that the show would go, you know, very far for very long, regardless of, you know, the things about the script that attracted me. But, uh, you know, here we are 15 seasons in mm. and, um, we're still at the top. People still watch the show and still want more. So, you know, right on. I mentioned that you had uh, Stephen Harper on when he was the prime minister at, at, the, at the time. Whose idea was it to get him on and how difficult was a task was that? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, Ted, that was Stephen's idea. Wow. Uh, because he was a fan <laughs> of the show. He and his daughter watched the show and, and they were fans. They liked the historical aspects. And he actually reached out and said, hey, I've got a story idea for you guys about the beginnings of, of uh, the uh, what we know as the NHL now and, and the debate between professionalism and amateur hockey mm -hmm. and whether they should be paid or not. And he's written a lot on the subject. He's, yeah. he's actually a, a hockey historian. And um, so we kind of said, well, hey, that's a really uh, – that's a really great idea. How do you feel about maybe doing a turn on the show? And and he agreed. And so, you know, through lots of logistics, a lot of hard work by a lot of uh, of great people, he he showed up one day with full security detail, and there were dogs and motorcycles and yeah. helicopters and things like that, and came and and filmed because you know, showbiz is dangerous. So you got to have <laughs> your security. <laughs> who, who, but, uh, who, what are the what are the other, some of the other non actor stars? Who have appeared on the show? Well, this season, um, I, I'm one of my idols, uh, somebody I was really thrilled to meet. Uh, and it's, again, a process to to sort of pave the way, build the relationship, talk to the right people. But um, uh, Getty Lee of Rush wow. does a guest spot this year, wow. which was uh, really special for me. You know, we've kind of met each other over uh, the past few years. We have 
mutual friends. And so through um, charity initiatives, we were able to sort of forge uh, a, a relationship. And um, his daughter, who's an actor, actually ended up, uh, a complete aside, ended up doing a spot on our show as well. And then, uh, you know, that just sort of, I guess, helped further the, 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 the relationship. And, um, and then all of a sudden, there he is. Yeah, that's 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 really cool. What, what I like about the fact is, is it it's it, it's just it is historic in in its nature. The program, some of which you have to think, okay, well, exactly how true is that? I mean, I wouldn't base a, a thesis on on any of the programs that I watch, but it, it's quite interesting <coughs> watching you know some of the in, inventions take place uh, over time. Exactly whether they're too exact to date or not, I'm, I'm not sure, but. Well, yeah, that's a tough one to sort of nail down specifically. And I think, you know, um, the fact that we do that pretty routinely, you know, uh, um, Oscar Wilde just uh, happened to be <laughs> walking through Toronto, uh, you know, things like that. We, we take some creative license, but we do try to narrow it to a very specific timeline that's as, as accurate as possible. Uh -huh. um, so as you know, people like Nikola Tesla and, and, and the like uh, were here at that time and, and did uh, have ventures here. And, you know, the, the sort of Great Lakes area is fairly tightly knit. So, so these people did make their way around. And Toronto, I, I like to say, you know, the six degrees of Toronto, it, it, it has had that relationship for a long time mm -hmm. and, uh, and continues to. So um, I think people can sort of read between the lines sometimes, you know, but we have had some letters from some well-meaning well people that talk about certain China uh, on the table not being accurate to period. And I appreciate that. Um, but I think you have to sort of accept the spirit with, in which we do these things yeah. and uh you know sometimes people i myself have learned some things you know there were electric cars prior to the the you know model t you know the electric car was very systematically buried in, in favor of uh you know petrol burning cars so so some of these things you learn along the way that you would think are futuristic and far out but they are actually they've been around a long time when you began the program in year one, what what were your thoughts? What was what were the thoughts of the cast members that you can recall? I mean, nobody can predict how well a program is going to do or not doing, but sometimes you have a gut feeling where you think there's something about this that that's 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 got it. There's something about this. Did you have all of those? There's something about this in you. Well, we did some work. We read with each other. I I uh, I can tell you a funny story. Um, during the audition process, it wasn't that easy for me to get the role. Um, the network was considering two of us, the younger version and the older version. And so there was a lot of debate and there were times where, you know, it was quiet for two weeks. I didn't know whether I had the job and, and so on. And, um, and I telephoned my agent, a gentleman named Perry Zemo at the time. And I said, gee, you know, what's going on? He goes, well, you know what? Just calm down. They're debating between using a younger Murdoch or an older Murdoch. I said, well, geez, who's this older Murdoch that they're considering? <laughs> I was the older version. <laughs> so, was, well, what would the younger version be? 11? What is it like? Young Sheldon or something? I don't know, but it was a funny, really humbling humbling experience. So I, I kind of went into the entire thing, just keeping to myself, keeping quiet and just doing my job because yeah. it, it very closely, very nearly never was. So uh, I, I'm, you know, that, that fact is not lost on me, uh, but the, the rest of the cast are just, I mean, on, on their own uh, are stellar. You look at uh, Johnny Harris, yeah. who's, you know, uh, got an entirely whole other career that's got nothing to do with us, and As and, a and we're lucky when we get them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a terrific cast, and and they gel extremely well. Yeah, and and that's something you have to fight for. I, I think just like your family, just like your work environment, you got to really sort of, you know, be willing to s sort of take certain certain uh, uh, things on the chin and and you know, take one for the family. Uh, and then there are times where you, you know, you've got to have these sit down talks and go, all right, what's going on. And, and, you know, I've always been one to, to not let these 
opportunities go by because, you know, things can fester and it can wreck the atmosphere of, of an otherwise, you know, really terrific thing, terrific opportunity that we have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 15 years, things happen. Uh, uh, people's feelings get hurt. Uh, uh, things get misinterpreted. Anything, anything can happen. And so it's important to to just continually forge that that relationship and that, you know, with the producers as well, with the network also and, and anybody in between is just you, you, you really can't take it for granted and you have to, you know, make it work. Do you ever worry that you're ever going to get to a point where somebody walks in and there's the jump of the shark script, as they say? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Um and for people who don't know what that means, that, that harkens back to an old uh, Happy Days episode where, where they, he literally jumped a shark in, in, a, in, in a pool. And, and from there, the credibility of the show just went downhill. Yeah, the Fonz. They, I mean, the they Fonz. were going for ratings, and they, yeah. they did a carryover to the next week of the Fonz jumping his motorcycle over a, a pond with a sh shark in it. And, and, and it just <laughs> it didn't... Yeah. It, it, what were they thinking? yeah. Well, you know, we have some pretty crazy uh, uh, story ideas, some pretty zany stuff. Paul Aiken, one of our writers, who's uh, uh, an executive producer as well, he's been with us the entire ride. And, you know, his scripts are known for being outlandish. Yeah. But, you know, we've sewn that in from the beginning, that fantastical aspect to the show. So we, we are uh, um, expected to push those boundaries you know, and it and it's it's expected from us from time to time to ask those questions of, of things that we don't really know the answer to to this day, but they're universal themes that that people ask themselves about. And and did this happen? And and the pharaohs and the Egyptians and and you know all the different mystical neat stuff. The 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 um, people who lived the, the subterranean people. That was a big thing at the turn of the century yeah. you know victorian era people believed there were there were you know men living underground there were the martians there was a fascination with martians there was a fascination with uh robots uh, automatons and steam powered robots that would you know possibly take over our our, our work uh, duties and things like that so how long do you think the show can go how long, well, how long would you like going, it to go I've said many times, Ted, that the show wouldn't end on my decision uh, as long as, you know, the caliber of, of the scripts continues to be as, as great as it has been. I, I wouldn't stand in the way. It's a, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of different shows. I've worked with thousands of people. I've worked with Academy Award winners. I, I, I've, I've worked with Frank Sinatra. I, I would be happy to do any number of other projects mm -hmm. uh, uh, in my life. But man, this kind of opportunity is a once in a career yeah. uh, uh, opportunity. And, and I get to do so many things. I, I, I get to, to direct now that that has been uh, a love for me. I, I'm finally doing the part of showbiz that I enjoy the most, which is that sort of quarterbacking um, collaborative team thing uh, that directing is you know you 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 pull ideas from everybody everybody plays to their strengths and you and you just sort of work within certain parameters and you got to be creative you know that that taxes me or i shouldn't say taxes me but it 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 forces me mm. to to sort of fire on so many more cylinders and and i just love it and then being one of the producers on the show that that part i didn't really realize but i've been actively doing that since day one you know, I, I've been sticking to the mission. And so whenever somebody says, you know, that's okay, uh, I say, no, hold on a second. We're in Victoria era, Toronto, uh, um, New England, as it, as it were. Um, I'll have to have you do that line over again. And, and I've just sort of been the gatekeeper, um, you know, just naturally it's just been my mission to, to just quality control on the show, which is what effectively uh, uh, – a network uh, producer would be there doing on a you know regular uh, network show. I'm I'm quite fascinated by actors who want to direct it. It seems that a lot of actors want to direct at one point or another, and and I try to draw a parallel between uh, actors and athletes. 
And I think to myself, okay, are there as many hockey players who want to be coaches as there are actors who want to be directors? And I don't think so. Why are there so many actors who want to be directors? I think it's an opportunity to um, up your game, of, to use your sports reference. Uh, I, I think, you know, in sports, yeah, a lot of players develop into other positions because they have such unique strengths and a unique perspective to become a defensive coach, to become an offensive coach, to to scout talent and so on. So I've seen that happen a lot. And then it's a similar thing with um, acting. Uh, certainly, if you act enough and in enough different capacities and with enough people, at a certain point, you learn efficiencies and you want to get to the next level because you are on set often this conduit through which all the different departments work. You facilitate a lot of different departments working. Well, the director does as well in, in a slightly sure. different capacity. That That's really what you do. You facilitate all the different departments coming together and creating this one thing right to the very end. And so I can see that being attractive for a lot of actors. But at the same time, I know a lot of actors who are just absolutely not interested. It is as foreign to them as, you know, working in uh, uh as a contractor it just it, it doesn't really appeal to them and it's not something that they are drawn to uh, uh per se and i've even had some actors in, in a part of my cast uh who wanted to shadow to learn the process to be exposed to what happens before they show up on set what, how do these decisions get made and and so on and just all of it to understand better to be a better actor. They're not even interested in being a director. They just want to know from the beginning to the end what that person goes through in order to be a better actor for them. So it's just every person's different. I think we see that transition happen a lot because it's a famous thing. You know, we, we are aware of these actors becoming directors because they're of note, they're, they're, they have notoriety. But you may not hear as much about people who move through departments in different uh, uh, corporate structures and they become the head, you know, the Bezos or whoever yeah. of their company eventually. If you could only do one or the other, that would be act or direct. And if you had to choose, could you choose and which would you choose? I would choose to direct. Uh, absolutely. Um, and the reason for that is that it's you 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 have something much more tangible at the end of the day i believe even though it's the exact same thing it's a piece of film or a tape or a digital file mm. of something it's the exact same thing you have contributed in a in every scene instead of just some of the scenes and just one side of the camera of that scene and you just have that much more of a tangible sort of end result and that's been the thing i've struggled with as a performer since the beginning is it's it's sort of a there there's it doesn't gratify as much as building something out of wood or metal or something like that and, and i've done a lot of that it, it, you know it's less of a tangible result and so directing is like ah, i need that I did this and this and this bad thing happened and we ended up with that. And, and once you've directed a couple of times, do you find that, that you have a tendency to, while you're working on a scene with, with a, with an actor start suggesting maybe do this, maybe do that. As opposed to just acting in the scene, all of a sudden you become an actor slash director at the same time. Or do you try to uh, compartmentalize those things? That's tough. That's difficult. Um, because, yeah, there are some boundaries in a sense. There are boundaries yeah. in the acting world that, you know, it's not always cool for an actor, whether it's the lead actor or any actor, to tell another actor, yeah, yeah. hey, I think you should do this. Um, I There are times where I do jump in, and it's for several reasons, and I have to be cautious because, you know, I don't want to be that, well, that asshole lead actor telling me what to do on his show. Oh, I don't. You know, that's a 
Yeah. That's a difficult thing. It's, it's dicey. So, so you really, I, I really have to respect the artist and respect that there's a chain, there's an order, there's mm. a, a, a decorum of sorts. There's a way that things are done. And, and that is generally through the director and, and I have to respect that person's uh, role in the thing as well. Yeah. But then there are also times where it's like, you know, uh, we reach a certain comfort level and I can say to somebody, whatever it may be, um, and, and oftentimes it's just an issue of quality control. It's like, hey, you, you, you know, you haven't been here before. You might want to keep this in mind. But, you know, I'm loath to give somebody a line reading or, or to get too specific, even though I, I have in the past and people have been pretty gracious generally speaking, I, I have to build that up. I have to build that relationship up. Otherwise it could come off the wrong way. Sure. And, and it's just an issue of like, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, instinctively just, here's the quickest result to what I think would be best for you. Uh, we're doing this scene. It's probably going to end up on your actor demo reel. Don't forget to pick up this little nuance here. Um, and it's just a suggestion. Right. And, and most people are great. More of the Ted Walsh and podcast after this. Hey, let me take a moment to tell you about my friends at Helenda's. They are the meat people. You know, I've been a fan of their products for years now, and without a doubt, they make some of the best sausage in Ontario. They are multiple award winners, having captured the Ontario's finest meat competitions, coveted award of excellence on three occasions, in addition to dozens of individual product awards. Hollandes has also received the Grand Champion Ribbon at the past two Royal Winter Fairs ready-to-eat meat snack competitions. So whether you're preparing a charcuterie board or a full-blown sit-down dinner for your friends or family, you'll find Hollandes award-winning products at fine meat shops throughout the province, now including selected Metro, Sobeys, Fortino's, and Foodland stores, along with their seven Hollandes locations. Their barbecued kielbasa is my favorite. On a fresh bun with horseradish, it is out of this world. But don't just take my word for it. Judge for yourself. On your barbecue, in your kitchen, or straight from the refrigerator. Hollandes, the way sausage should taste. Are you looking forward to a wedding in your calendar? Hey, it's Ted Walsh, and for Tom's Place, if you're the father of the bride or a special guest who needs an elegant new suit or tuxedo, Tom is the wedding specialist who will help you get ready for the big day. And if you're the lucky bridegroom, Tom is a friend of the groom and the best man to help you dress the entire wedding party for your special day, whether it's formal or informal, destination wedding or traditional. Tom's have contemporary tailored suits, or classic tuxedos with all the accessories. So why rent a tux when it's so affordable to buy a classic that'll take you to events for years to come? Find out more at Tom's Place in Kensington Market. No one can dress you better or save you more than our wedding specialist. Tom's Place will suit you. Now back to Ted and his guest. I'm speaking today with actor Ayanica Bisson. Do they ever give you a break when they pull you over speeding? (laughs) I have... (laughs) <laughs> I have been pulled over a couple of times and the traffic stops ended up being a lot longer than uh, I remember when I was younger. Uh, and then afterwards I think to myself, well, gee, that was actually really nice. And I, and, and I, now that I think about it, I think they may have recognized me because we had a long chat and I left without a ticket. So yeah. maybe, but they were pretty cool about it. I will say that nobody outright says, Hey, you're that guy. It, no, yeah. no. And, and, you know, they're doing a job and, and I appreciate the job that they're doing. And yeah, anytime I've been pulled over, it was for a reason. So, you know, I have to sort of keep my mouth shut. And <laughs> if they want to chat, great. <laughs> Fine. I mean, you don't keep like a backseat filled with uh, a Murdoch Mysteries merchandise that you can pass out every time you're in, in trouble. Can you imagine? Yeah, really. Can you imagine? Hey, uh, listen, how would you like a hat? Yeah, yeah. Want to swap <laughs> badges? <laughs> oh, boy. You must have had times because you, you, the show has to be a lot of fun to do because, I can, as I mentioned, you, you, the cast gels so well. So it just seems to me like there's got to be days where you go on set and you think, man, this is going to be a lot of fun and this is going to be great. And, 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 and subsequently, there must be opportunities that arise where suddenly something happens that you weren't planning on it and you think, damn, that's good. Keep it in. Does that happen? Oh, yeah. 
I think you have to actively cultivate that that vibe that you're talking about. You have to actively, it's got to be fun. And oftentimes, you know, it starts at the top. I, I know that a lot of mood on set uh, um, begins on the lead begins with the lead performer because I've been on many sets where the lead performer were, 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 they were not pleasant people, and and so there's a certain tone that a set will take when those people are around, and and that's not lost on me. And so I've tried to always keep the the tone of our set very upbeat and positive and an opportunity for people to be creative uh to you know give ideas uh uh because my idea is not always the best and that's the bottom line right. um so you know some things do happen like you said organically and it's like great yeah that's what we're here for yeah we're here for those great ideas that come from wherever and whomever and and then we keep it and there it is it's in the show and you watch and, and that's why when i watch murdoch mysteries i laugh my ass off and nobody knows why because i remember all of those things i remember what that day uh, was all about and why that particular thing stayed in the movie and how it came to be and 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 what we were laughing about at the time and, or trying to keep a straight face during a certain scene and so i you know it's always pleasant and 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 that's <laughs> That's really why I've been there for as long as I have. And I think, you know, a lot of other people uh, um, as well. Well, there, there, can you give me an example of something that, of, of, of a situation that happened that, that took everybody by surprise that somehow got left in, in, the, in the show that wasn't originally supposed to be there? Okay. So there is a scene, um, and, and I don't know what season it was from, but it was – the uh, the Murdoch, uh, uh, Dr. Ogden and, and William Murdoch hire Frank Lloyd Wright to design their new home. Of course. And Who Murdoch, else? Yes, Frank. <laughs> and, and, and Murdoch is very leery of this young startup. And, 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 and everyone is very critical about these houses with no walls and no rooms. It's all just open and it's just a complete disaster. But Murdoch insists on doing one uh, uh, personal touch, and that is a um, a what's effectively a microwave oven, but it's a, you know, Murdochian potato cooking room. (laughs) So it's this huge contraption. And of course, of course, somebody gets stuffed in there and the thing turned on and they get murdered at the presentation (laughs) of the house and and off we go. Right. So we are there the day that, that we have to discover this we're filming and there's a crowd of people in the milling around inside the the murdoch home and all of our lead characters run from one place where they've just heard the sound and the scream they run and they open the potato cooking thing and the camera was sitting behind with an open sort of slot looking at us once the sort of uh, um, door opens and what they had done is they had preset all kinds of blood and meat and slime and all this stuff and we didn't know so we come running around and open the door and we all burst out laughing. It was so completely <laughs> heinous and disgusting. And, and it was just too, too far beyond. And we all laughed our asses off. So we immediately had to do it again. But the take that stayed in there, you can see all four of us are actually stifling a huge amount of laughter, but mm. they cut it really fast. Yeah. So you can't tell, but that take stayed in. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I, I, I figured that much because it, again, it just it seems like you it, like you all get along so well. I mean, I'm and I've worked at places where people have gotten along really well, but it's, and it's not every day, obviously. But for the most part, yeah. it's it's a it's a good set. And you, you don't hear these 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 ugly rumors and you know where people are yelling and banging banging each other's heads like you do on other television shows, which is which is fortunate. Um, and again, we're Canadian; we're a lot more polite. We're we're all much nicer to each other. Uh, but I'd like to see somewhere you know what, somewhere down. You know the fact that you've gone into the past. You know, with, with some of the characters that you have, Alexander Graham Bell. We mentioned you know a number of uh, Tesla. Uh, but I'd like to, I'd like to see a future episode where, where it's where it's reversed, where suddenly like the family from Shit's Creek shows up. Oh gosh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've done we've done some stuff like that where we had. Uh, uh, 
Arlene Dickinson come in and be a, a very smart, uh, financial savvy person. Yeah. You know, we've had, uh, we've had a, a lot of great people come in and, and be, a, you know, a version of themselves yeah. in essence, or, 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 you know, uh, um, of, of what they're famous for. Yeah. And, and that's a lot of fun. Um, actually, uh, Colin Mockery plays an arch villain at this, uh, 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 in our show. And he's great. You know, he's this very sweet, great, hilarious comedian yep. guy. But for him to be this sort of arch villain has been, uh, I think, I, yep. I hope, I think he enjoys it. And we certainly have been enjoying it. I mean, and he's just so fantastic to, uh, to have around. I, I ended up directing a, a movie and so I, I, I hired him for the movie, him and his wife, Deb uh, McCabe, which you, you, you probably know as well. Yep. Um, uh, McGrath, excuse me, Deb McGrath. And, you know, it was a treat. It was so awesome. And, and that's really what it's about. It's just having all these great people that you love and respect and, and get along with and make shows so that it's a good time, not a grind. Now, you're doing commercials for uh, for Intact, which is an automobile insurance company, and they're actually really well-done commercials. Uh, most people are not fans of commercials, so you better do well, otherwise uh, people are going to be really turning against you. Uh, but they're, they're done well, and, and I thought to myself, the first couple times I saw them, I thought, you know, for Yannick, this must be a good thing because it gives him a chance to step outside of the character so that people don't immediately think that this is the only character that exists inside that particular body, because actors can get stereotyped in 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 to the point where it paralyzes their future careers, where people can't see anything Absolutely. but Detective Murdoch, and you don't want that. Yeah, you you nailed it there, Ted. That's absolutely true. Um, what I spend my days doing is actively looking for work that is different from Murdoch. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and by that, I mean uh, in format and in character and performance and so on. So so I'm really glad that things went the way they did with um, with Intact Insurance, who, who are terrific people. The agency, the, the, the you know, the, the representative from the representatives from the company are just terrific. And yeah, I get to do some lighthearted stuff, mm -hmm. some comedy, some off the cuff stuff. And, and, and we improvise sometimes some, some of those taglines that have been ended up in the, the commercial were stuff that was, <laughs> that I improvised. Uh, you know, we did 10 different things and one of one or two of them I improvised and they just ended up keeping them. And, and that, that is so much fun. Where you, you mentioned know, to the guys who get free parking and then you say, is it too early? That one uh, too soon. Too soon, yeah. Too soon, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one wasn't mine. Okay. That one wasn't mine. But uh, it was a uh, it was fun to do that one, and and uh, we shot underneath the uh, in the parking underneath the Montreal the Olympic Stadium, um, which was freezing cold, yeah. but uh, it, was, it was an interesting spot. And, and, and yeah, you know, all of the other stuff that I do is 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 really to either I, I shouldn't say either contrast or complement um, what I do with Murdoch and, and to be as different as possible because of that. I, I, you know, I, I can be very straight laced on that show and it is a, of a certain part of the spectrum and deliberately tight to the vest and deliberately proper uh, for the period, for the character. Yeah. And that's kind of his superpower a little bit, you know, um, don't show too much so that when I do show something, it has more uh, impact, and and uh, I leave room for everybody else to 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 s sort of play all the colors, and 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 I'm the through line in a sense. Wow! Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you know, it's it's. Uh, I'm, I'm famous for. Uh, sure. Wow, that's very kind. I, I I'm big with the moms. I will say that. I, I, I'm uh, I'm big with the moms. I'm <laughs> big with the aunts, the moms, the sisters. Uh, you know, but it's funny. Uh, the bulk of the time, people that ask me to uh, pose for a picture or something like that is, is a lot of guys. 
a lot of guys are like, oh man, this is for my mom or this is for my girlfriend or whatever. And, uh, and it's cool. Well, I, I, I like to think so, I guess. I, <laughs> I try to, I try to stay up on the news, you know? <laughs> I am. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I uh, win some, lose some. Um, yeah, you know what? I've been uh, a Habs fan all my life. The first hockey sweater I ever saw was a was a Habs sweater, a, a home jersey. So you know, what are you gonna do? You, you, uh, it, it's part of your culture. It's part of who you are, yeah. and, uh, and and you can't. I'm sure you'll agree. You can't change it. No. You, you, no matter no. what, you, you win some, you lose some, and you, yeah. you, you, you stick with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, growing up, you, you self admittedly, you, you weren't the greatest uh, uh, in, school, in school. You had poor attendance habits. And, and you kind of regret that looking back? Always. Always. I'm very um, self uh, aware uh, about that. Uh, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, self-conscious about it. Um, I, I was not able to either through, um, my own decisions or through lack of support. Um, th there wasn't, you know, online schooling, there wasn't, uh, even, um, anything that wasn't attendance based was not really in place when I was uh, trying to get through high school. And it was difficult because I was making a, a, a ridiculous amount of money and getting a huge amount of experience and culture traveling around the country. I, I would film in, in, you know, the Saguenay region of Quebec, or I would film on Vancouver Island in, in BC and the cultural things that I would learn and, and, and the technical knowledge that I was gaining working on shows long-term traveling, um, you know, becoming empathetic to different people's struggles and all this stuff, I, I would argue now was invaluable as a human, mm -hmm. but it had zero value to my, uh, to my um, Ontario uh, education uh, credits. So uh, <laughs> it was, it was really, really difficult because I would have, I would test well, uh, I was reasonably intelligent kid. Um, but then, you know, I would miss uh, uh, four weeks of school and uh, I would just yeah. shoot my year to hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was tough to always try to come back because then I would come back to square one and it's like, well, I know all this and that'd be bored and I'd have zero uh, um, interest in doing it all over again. Sure. And so, you know, it fell by the wayside, but I was making money. I was making far more money than, um, you know, my, my parents and, and, you know, I blew through some of it. Um, I, I tried things. I, I, you know, you, you buy yourself a car, or you crash that car, you, you know, all the different things that you do that are stupid with money. But I, I there's valuable experiences that, that helped me to be a better adult. And, and then it's interesting because as I was going through all of this as a teenager, at the same time, a lot of what I was filming was being used, um, some NFB projects or some CBC projects would end up being used in the curriculum in schools to teach kids, you know, social studies or whatever. And, uh, you know, the irony was just like brutal, uh, but there it is. <laughs> so, so now, you know, I have people that come up to me and say, I love your show. I love your stuff. The first thing I ever saw was when I was in uh, junior high or your, your series, you know, brothers by choice was on. And, and then I'm, I have to kind of yeah. smile <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, think about, you know, how embarrassed I am that I didn't make it through high school. Yeah. But, uh, and you, you, you married at a young age. You were, you were like, what, 21 or something? That's, that's, that's almost like a Murdoch era marriage. Yeah, we were exactly right. We were very young. Um, Chantal and I met actually the first time we were 15 and I was, uh, I was smitten, uh, but she was dating other 
uh, somebody else for a long time. <laughs> and then we had a, a chance meeting a number of years later and uh, she agreed to go out with me and uh, I never let her go. She, she's, she, I didn't even let her go home. <laughs> she's been with me ever since. That's great. That's great. You're an avid cyclist? I am. Uh, keeps me young, keeps me fit. Uh, and, and what I like about it is, is a lot of the tinkering aspect of it. There's a lot of social aspect of it, health, adrenaline, uh, and then also there's travel associated with it. You know, like some people take their golf clubs, I take my bike. Mm -hmm. Is that is that the place where uh, Yannick goes when Yannick needs to break away from the world and just uh, think to himself for a while? Yeah, uh, definitely out into nature, uh, out into the forest, and uh, the bike is optional, but uh, definitely um, uh, more often than not, I, I'll take my bike with me, and uh, and that just sends me off into that place, you know, that that place when I was little, that the, the the rosebud moment, yeah, yeah, um, for me is 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 that, you know, and, uh, and then I regroup and uh, get back in touch with the things that. Uh, you know, make me, me, and then I'm ready to go again. Well, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, it, it's been a real thrill for me, and I say I'm a, a big fan of the show. I think, you, and kudos to everybody you work with, because I think they're all doing a, an incredible job. I hope you keep going for years and years and years, and just, I, I look forward each week to find out who's going to be on. <laughs> it's, to me, it's... Oh, that's great. You know, and it's, so thank you so much for having me, Ted. I, I really appreciate it. From your lips to God's ears, I mean, I'll I'll keep doing this until I'm uh, till I can't anymore. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It's it's just been a wonderful opportunity. That's part of you know the Canadian f fabric. Uh, uh, you know how many shows have done that uh, here in Canada, and uh, I'm, I'm just very very proud and very fortunate to be part of it. Great stuff. Well, congratulations in your nomination this year as well, and and good luck to you in that. Oh, thank you very much. All right. That's awesome. Thanks. All right, all the best to you. Hope to do this again. Yes, sir. Anytime. The Ted Wallachian Podcast has been brought to you by Helenda's The Meat People. Enjoy their award-winning products at selected Metro, Sobeys, Fortino's, and Foodland locations. Helenda's The Way Sausage Should Taste. And Tom's Place. For the finest in men's clothing at unbeatable prices, it's Tom's Place at 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. Tom's Place will suit you. The Ted Wallachian Podcast is produced by Joey Roselli. Technical production by Paul Gatt. Music by Bike Thieves. I'm Becky Coles. Submit your questions and comments to ted at twmedia.ca.